All right. Thank, Thank you for letting me know about my audio. audio. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah, this, this is live, man. This is this is really re- live. Just so you know, this is actually live. So um, uh, we got to work out these audio issues. Um, let's fix this. Waiting for video. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, I have a screen to show you guys and. Uh, Give me a second here. We're going to fix this right now. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? I can see the audio feed working, but if you guys can't hear me, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. I Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Let me just – I just want to take time to say thank you guys so much for following me. Thank you guys over the years for um, for uh, believing – in in me giving all the positive uh feedback i've been getting i really appreciate it and um uh just thanks a lot um it's this is something i that um i like to do something i happen to be uh pretty good at doing and uh, i really appreciate everybody who's been following me supporting me over the years and um so i'll introduce myself again my name is bruce if you happen to be new to this um i I do cybersecurity, um, specifically dealing with security compliance. Security compliance is the rule set the organizations use to manage very important information. Things like your social security numbers, your personal information, your credit card information. That's what people like me do is, is protect society's important assets and information. So. What I do is help people get in this industry, um, and I've helped actually several people get many different jobs in this industry, high-paying jobs in some cases, and I want to continue to do that, and I also want to help people to uh, come in on a low end, like start off, and I'm working on that. For now, um, I've got this course right here that's coming out in a couple weeks. It's the SEA course. It's how to do security control assessments. I've been getting a lot of people asking me about this one. So here it is right here. It's coming out soon. Right, This is a draft. This is not available for sale just yet. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to release it early to you guys who watch me on a regular basis. And then it'll be cheaper. And then once I get like 90% done, because these things are never 100% done because I'm always adding stuff to them, add more content, add more videos and stuff. So they get bigger and bigger. As they get bigger over time, I have to charge more because it's more, you're getting way more for that. So you'll get a certificate on afterwards. And as far as I know, there's no, there's not many courses like this. And the ones that I have seen out there like this are thousands of dollars. Of, and they're normally done directly to the organization that's why they charge so much because they can charge the government or whoever and who knows maybe one day i'll do that too i don't know i'm not gonna sit here and say you know <laughs> sit on my high horse and be like oh i'm gonna sell these for three dollars no it's it's not gonna be cheap but um i i'm gonna be able to beat uh thousands of dollars that's for sure all right so um let me show you what else we've got going on if you are interested in doing uh having one-on-one coaching i'm available for now um, consulting directly with your organization. I do NIST 800. Uh, I do NIST 800 risk management framework. I do PCI compliance. I have a DUNS number. I have a public trust um, certification, and uh, I, I'm very, very familiar with federal organizations and private organizations who service federal and state organizations. So if you're interested in having me as a subject matter expert come in and help you out. Part time, you know, just come and have have me come in for a week or something or two few days or something like that. Message me at uh, contacts. My contacts are here, but you can message me at contact at um, convocourses.com and we'll we'll chit chat on what the price is going to be or whatever. Um, also, I want to let you guys know. I've got a book out right now on Audible. I don't know if you guys are on Audible, but if you haven't, I've got the link in the description below that goes directly to the book. Right now, they're offering some kind of a free trial where you can get my book for free. And then they've got a ton of other free stuff, actually. Let me just type in, show you the book. It's only this book, the first book that I released in the series, is only an hour and a half long. Now, the reason for this is because it's 
it's the beginning of how to actually do risk management framework 800. I'm going to add another one that I'm working on right now, a book that's going to go into the control families. Now, obviously that one's going to be longer. Let me, I'm going to show you that one right now. But if you're interested in this one, like knowing like a high level view of what a risk management framework information system security officer does for this job. Yeah, go get this book. It's an hour long. You can listen to it on audio. Um, and also you can get the book on Amazon. The book is out right now on Amazon. Go ahead and check it out. It's on Kindle. You can get it on paperback. Short book, short, straight to the point, breaks it all down for you. But there it is right there. It's on Amazon. It's on Audible. And let me show you the book I'm working on right now. Just like a sneak peek uh, of what I'm working on. Um, let me see if I can grab that one. Give me a second here. Bear with me. Yeah, Internet Explorer just decided not to work. You know how that works. You know how that goes. Okay, so let me show you the actual book that I'm working on now. What it does is it goes into just something that I just noticed would be really helpful Something I wish that I would have had when I started getting into this risk management framework stuff as an information system security officer, as a security, cybersecurity person in the role of a compliance type person doing NIST 800, doing federal DOD risk management framework type stuff. I wish somebody would have done this for me. And so now here it is. It's going to be a book. It'll be like 40 bucks or something like that. A little bit longer than the first one, actually a lot longer than the first one. And it's going to go through the 853 control families, not each one. There's a thousand controls. I'm not going to hit every control and the security enhancements of each one. That's not, I don't feel like that's necessary. I think that you should refer to NIST 800 special publications for that because that's what it's for. But uh, what I want to do is explain the context of each one. For example, if we were to go into audit, AU controls, audit, accountability. So let me show you that one. So if we were to go into that one, um, you will see this. First of all, I explain what it is briefly, go right into it. And another thing I do is I go into like, what are the most visible controls? Because a lot of times, You'll have control families that have literally 50. Some of them literally have 50 controls, a family of 50 controls and their security enhancements. It's, that's a lot. So what I do is I focus on the ones that are the most visible and the ones that you're going to probably have to deal with in most organizations, right? So AU controls, you're going to always have to deal with the policy and procedures. You're going to have to deal with AU2, which is uh, event logging. You're going to have to deal with content of the audit records, like what is in the audit record itself? Is it the time date stamp? Is it the name of the actual event? What's going on, details of the event? Stuff like that is what that means. So then I go into like, what is it exactly? Here's a little example of what you can see when if you're in the event logs of uh, the event viewer of a Windows system. Here's what it looks like in the Linux, in a Linux system. Because what I'm trying to do is give you a uh, an actual idea of how this works in real time and not just some PhD high level explanation like you see in the NIST SP 800. The reason why they have to write it like that is because they're having to write for the Intel organizations, they're having to write for military, the DEA, FBI, uh, they're having to write it for, con uh, for contractors, for weapon systems. So they have to write it in such a way that it's broad and detailed enough to where everyone can get as much information as they can so they have to write it like a like a college paper kind of <laughs> um but what i'm doing is writing it more practical in layman's terms so you can understand it and giving you some examples of what it looks like so you can understand what is a u control family what really is this and i'm breaking it down from the perspective of an iso a you as an iso a you as a cybersecurity person in the in this field, what do you need to know? Like what what is from the perspective of a 
cybersecurity person doing compliance? What do you need? What, I'm looking from your perspective and what do you need to do when you are in the prepare phase of the risk management framework? What do you need to do when you're in the categorized uh, stage of the risk management framework? And then what what do you need to know? Like what are the where are the gotchas at? For example, when you're looking at logging, you'll notice that if you have a low impact system, a low impact system would be like a web server that has publicly available information, as opposed to a weapon system that's classified, that's doing intel for troop movements or something, right? Two different systems with two different impact levels. You'll notice that there's way more AU controls in the high and moderate. That's something I address. I say, well, what do you need to know going from a low to a high? What do you really need to know? And I tell you, I tell you, like, here's the things you need to know. You need to know that if you're in a high level environment with the classified information and stuff like that, where the whole bunch of computers, you need to have automation in there. What happens if you don't have automation? So that's something that the assessor is going to look at. That's that might be something they're going to look at. Then what I'm going to do is there's some misspellings in here. I'm still writing. I'm literally writing this book. I got I stopped writing a book so I can do this live. <laughs> so so that's why there's misspellings and stuff. I got to go through it and I got to get an editor and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's, it's a whole process. But, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, like, here's what a large organization looks like. They usually use something like Splunk or like ArcSight or like not ArcSight so much anymore. But Logarithm, they have some sort of a seam or a security information event manager that su that pulls in all the logs so that a security, a cybersecurity analyst can actually look at it. That's a completely different category of, of cybersecurity. But these are the things that you need to know. Like an assessor is going to be looking for stuff like that. And then what I do is I break this down into a an actual an actual um, I give a specific example of stuff that either happened to me or I talk to some of my friends who are in security who will get relate a story to me that has ha something has happened to where they can um, where they had to respond or they had to do something in order to uh, so I want to show you like what is going on like in the real world what's happening like real world events the the names have been changed to protect the innocent so that you can have a real world example of what's going on with this particular control family and like look at that <laughs> i don't it's i don't know anyway you'll you'll see why that that picture of uh, two people on a beanbag chair are in there but that's the type of stuff that's in the book um, somebody said, is this book on Amazon already? No, not yet. So I'm working on a series of books for the risk management framework. So this, this one right here that you're looking at is the first in the series. And that one breaks down a high level view of what is risk management framework, uh, NIST 800. What is it? So it's, it's a very short book. You get straight to the point. It, it addresses the tasks that you need to do if you're in this role as an information system security officer. So it, it's pretty high level. And it's a short book, but the other one's going to be a little, it's going to be more detailed and it's going to ha go into each control family. And that's the one I was just showing you. It's going to be a series of three or four books that I'm going to do over the course of the next three to four months. The first one is this one, a guide. The next one's going to be controls. The next one after that um, is ass assess and where I'm going to talk about you are SCA and you need to know what interview questions do I ask for this control family? What types of testing can I do for this particular control family? Do I need to do testing for this control family? Can I do testing for this control family? And then what do I observe as I'm going through? What do I look for? This, that kind of stuff, whenever I've been an assessor, is so valuable. Like to be able to look at something and read, okay, what are they looking for? What do we look for to know how to assess this particular control, this particular system? What am I looking for when I'm on site? That's the kind of stuff that's going to be in that assessor book. So those are all the things that I'm doing for a complete set of books. And if I can add another book, I probably do DOD uh, for risk management. Risk management for DOD is one I would like to do. You'll see that that one's not really that much different from the risk management framework stuff I talk about. As a matter of fact, mine's a lot more detailed than what they go into usually. But um, yeah, so that's it. There's uh, there's an audio book for this one. 
Um, you, you can actually get this one for free if you're signing up for Audible for the first time. Um, it's it's a only sh it's short. It's an hour and thirty minutes. I mean, that's it, it's breaking it straight down. It gets straight to the point. And then here it is. If you want to just read it on eBooks, and then there's a paperback version of it. So th that's out there and coming soon. I have a security control assessor course. Obviously, this is going to take me some time to do. I'm going to release it early. And uh, it's going to walk you through what you need to know and do as an assessor. If you're an SEA, like what do you need to do? Like what? There's a lot of steps before you actually conduct the assessment that are not talked about. Like if you can prepare properly before you even get there, that's 90% of the job, to be honest with you. So that's a lot of the stuff I focus on. I'm releasing some of that. If you watch my YouTube channel, I'm actually releasing some of that stuff here and there. Uh, some parts and bits and pieces of it. Uh, when is the assessor book going to be ready? I really need it. Yeah, um, it's going to take me time. I still got to do the control book first and then probably I'm going to knock that one out in July. Like I'm going to I'm going to knock it out from July to August. That's my goal. Um, but in the meantime, I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but I have my TikTok is is blowing up, baby. <laughs> I mean, not really, but uh, join me on TikTok. I've got over a thousand um, subscribers, followers on there, and I'm talking about the same stuff I talk about here. Actually, this one's a little bit different because it's a little bit more personal. It's a little bit short. It's shorter, but it's like I'm answering people's questions on um, TikTok, and every now and then I put those on youtube so you'll actually see some of those tiktoks on there but join me on tiktok ask questions participate we're building this community across all platforms i'm also on facebook um uh we're on tiktok we're on instagram we're on uh youtube we're gonna build a big ass community so that all of us can participate in this and you have you might have an sca who's been doing this for 20 years who would chime in and tell and help somebody who's new to this and then we might have a a uh, a PCI compliance guy come in and explain different things. That's kind of my vision of where I want this all to go, like a community of like-minded security professionals who are helping each other out in security compliance. That's what I want to do is build a community that doesn't need me, doesn't require Bruce to continue. And uh, for that, if you look in the description below, I have a Discord that we're building up. We're about to 50 users right now. Um, I'm going to start putting jobs. Oh, that's another thing I want to tell you guys about. Um, starting like yesterday, last week, I started putting out jobs, actual jobs that people send to me. If you didn't know, I'm pretty good at getting jobs. I can, I, I've been getting a lot of opportunities. I don't, I can't possibly use all these opportunities. People constantly blowing up my phone. People constantly sending me messages on, Inst, on, um, on, um, LinkedIn, on all these different channels, on my email, like I can't do all these jobs. So what I do is I tell you guys about these jobs people send in to me. And that's what these these videos like this one right here is about. This is an actual Position, job that was sent to me years. where I'm just somebody asked. No, this isn't a job, so what they this is a what difference I recommend between this. Security Plus and I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Uh here it is right. I think this is one right here. Trader okay, yeah, here's one. one. This is a network administrator one job. This and there's a couple of industries that, that was that was the video so. right there. And I got a Wi-Fi tester position. I got one work from home hundred thousand dollar job. I got a validator. And if you're wondering, like Bruce, why don't you take these jobs? Like, listen, I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, I'm taking a break right now in between jobs, and um, I'll I'll jump back into it when I'm ready. Um, but yeah. This is these are all just jobs people sending to me. So if you jump on to TikTok is the best place for these jobs that are LinkedIn. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, let me show you my LinkedIn page. My LinkedIn is, is also blowing up. The, the LinkedIn is another place to follow me about jobs if that's what you are interested in. What I do is when people email me these jobs, I just post it. I post these all these recruiters and stuff they they contact me and say hey Bruce do you want this job you know it's here it's there it's remote whatever it makes x amount of dollars 
you know, are you interested? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not interested, but I have many friends. I've got thousands of friends who might be interested. So send me the job description and then I'll I'll uh, I'll send it to them. So that's what I've been doing on TikTok. And I also put reels. I put Facebook reels out there too. anywhere, any platform you're on. I'm trying to put it on all platforms. Obviously, you know, sometimes it takes me some time, but this is my LinkedIn account. I'll, I'll send stuff on here from time to time, and I start answering questions on LinkedIn as well. Uh, let me see if I can. Where's the activities at? Activities, because I put some jobs. Oh, here we go. So here's the activities. These are some jobs and stuff or comments people have been um, asking me, and I just started just started answering the questions, you know. But there it goes right there. Just follow me on uh, on LinkedIn. It's if you go to if you type in Bruce C I S S P R M F, you'll find me. You'll find me. Um, and I think I might have the link in the in the description below. If not, then it's on my YouTube channel. But here it is right here. Just just uh, feel free to follow me and um and uh, get those jobs. So yeah, that's. I got a lot of stuff going on um, to help people out. That's the mission. But let's dive into some questions. Some Somebody asked me. Let me see if I can find. Uh, Mr. Hicks, I think you asked me a question about, about uh, Stig's. Was it Stig's? The CCIs? You, you asked a question about how to find out CCI, the common controls. No, was that? No, it wasn't common controls. I'm trying to find your question, sir. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to just go to YouTube and find that question again. You were asking me about how to map CCIs to actual um, um, controls, security NIST security controls, and um, let me let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find all the questions, actually. Let's find all the questions. A lot of my um, weekly podcast is just answering community, interacting with the community. I want to do, at some point, what I would like to do is, is um, a live presentation where people can call in. And But that's kind of a whole different setup that I have to take time to to figure that out I at one point I was doing it on um, attempting to do it on using discord and maybe I'll maybe I'll pick that up again and, and see if I can get, get that going get the discord going all right let's see oh I got some people adding hit me up on discord appreciate that thanks guys Okay. All right. Let's see here. Give me a second, guys. I'm I'm actually logging into my uh my YouTube channel. I usually set all this up before we even start, but silly me. And if you guys have any questions on this live, feel free to ask whatever it is. Ask the question. I'll, I'll if I don't know it, I'll figure it out and I'll make a video about. It. I've done that before, where somebody asked me a question and a week later I, I busted out an entire mini course on it. <laughs> so uh, let me see here. Let's see. Let's go to Studio YouTube Studio. My internet's kind of slow here. If you guys happen to be watching me on Facebook, live on Facebook, um, welcome. Welcome to the party. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, type them. I don't know if, if Facebook will actually send those to my the current software I'm using, but let's give it a try. All right, here we go. Here's some questions right here, some comments, and I will do my best. Okay, to answer some of these questions. Okay. 
Um, it's at the bottom of the stig. It's mapped to CCI. Then the CCI is mapped to the control fan. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So the question had to do with stigs and how they map to control families. And in, if you look in the, the security test implementation guide, um, security technical implementation guide, you'll see it. So right now I'm on the stigviewer.com site. Thanks, Mr. Hicks, for that 10 bucks. I appreciate you, sir. But if you look into, let me see, if you go here to the NIST family controls, actually STIGs, you go to STIGs on the STIG viewer. A, this security test implementation guide, security technical implementation guide, is really good at breaking down each individual application, operating system, configurations that you need. So let me, let me just give you an example. Like all of these are... Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So all of these that you see are different applications. A real good one is the actual Chrome browser. So Chrome browser in a federal organization and state organizations, it has to be locked down. Um, they might allow you to load it onto their systems, their endpoint devices or their servers or whatever. But and they might, uh, you know, um, rely heavily on that particular application, whatever it might be. But you've got to lock it down. That means you've got to put security um, configurations on that system. And so this is an example. So they're allowing you to use Chrome, but they have a whole booklet that walks you through all the security enhancements and secu security controls and configurations that you have to put on there. So the question that Mr. Hicks had is, how does that map to the NIST 853 controls? And I'm about to answer that one. So if you go in the STIGs, it has it in there. So first of all, let's look at this. The STIGs breaks every individual thing that you can think of for an application or operating system, all the security features. So for example, starting from the top, um, a running an out-of-date plugin uh, must be disabled. So you have scanners that can find this. You'll run a, a, a vulnerability scanner, and then it'll pick up, okay, it looks like you have the Google browser here, but you have some out-of-date plugins. Um, and it's it's suggesting that you disable those or update them. Either disable it, remove it, or update. And the reason why is because it it's a it's an attack vector. That's it's a way that it's a way that attackers will get into your system. And actually some of them are really bad to where they can take control of your system from the browser. So um, you know most of them are are mediocre like they're they're not going to be that but if you see a sensitive high that's bad that means that means that the risk is too high for the organization somebody could literally use that one plugin of google uh, of google chrome and get into your system and and just own your system so for this example right here turning off the plugin there's no ia control ia control meaning security controls that's mapped so some of them don't have a mapping but what this is what this is missing is actually it is mapped because just off the top of my head, just knowing this, um, this would be SI8 because SI8 is I want to make sure I'm not lying to you. SI8 is or SI2. No, it's SI2. OK, you know what? Let's stop guessing. It's SI2. NIST 8 SI2. The reason why I know that is because I use that one quite a bit. And that one has to do with flaw remediation. NIST 800. I just I know that one because it just comes up a lot. So that's NIST 853 uh, controls, and let me just let's just bring this up right here. NIST 853. Um, NIST 853 is a catalog. It's a uh, catalog of all the security controls that you have in the NIST 800. NIST, and the security control is security best practices for all parts and pieces of an organization's um, assets. So it's not just computers, actually. It's not just servers. It's not just your phone. It's not just workstations. It's the actual facility that you're in. It's the, it's the processes that you guys do. It's when somebody walks in the building with or without a badge. It's, it's also HVAC. It's like, do you have heating and cooling so the computers don't overheat and shut down? So the controls cover every aspect of, your, of protecting all aspects of an asset and the information that they house. 
Um, so anyway, we were on. We were look. We were talking about NIST. Uh, we we're talking about SI two flaw remediation. And flaw remediation. The reason why I went straight to that one is because that deals with if an if a system doesn't have is out of date. Um, that's a flaw. That's a flaw, and it can be exploited. So right here, that's SI two. So a lot of times, um, I would say, especially if you're dealing with something that out of date software, which is a big one, right? I mean, that's <laughs> end of life software. Out of date software, software needs to be upgraded. It's it's SI two, flaw remediation. Because look at it, it says identify, and we've identified it, right? If you ran a Stig and it says, hey, this Chrome browser is out of date, you have or you have a plugin that's out of date, like that one we just saw. We've identified that. So SI two right away, we're doing part of it. Report. We're reporting it because it's documented now. It's in the Stig, or we ran a Stig viewer, or we ran, or we ran some kind of vulnerability scanner, and it has a report, breaks it all down, and says it in there. Correct the system flaws. There you go, right there. That's what we're supposed to do. We have to fix it. Test the software updates related to the flaw remediation for effectiveness. So now that we know we've identified we've reported now we got to fix the system and they're saying we got to test it like that means if you're in vulnerability management you know exactly what i'm talking about here because it's not enough to just go ahead and throw uh update that that patch because it might shut the system down it might it might break whatever you're trying to fix so you got to test it like once you put it on there you got to make sure it works properly make sure you can still do your business or mission and then go forward and then it says Install the security relevant software. So that's the updates to the firmware, the software, whatever you got to do. Now you're going to go ahead and and um, and update it. And it says uh, incorporate flaw remediation into the organization's configuration management process. That means so configuration management is super important. And this is another overlooked part of organizations. So it's something that it's not talked about enough and and a lot of organizations when they don't do it you can tell because they're they're all their stuff is messed up like they they don't a lot and a lot of times what you'll know what i've noticed is that when they don't have good configuration management their turnover is really high that means people are leave because it's too stressful nobody knows where anything is nobody knows what the assets are they don't have a baseline and so cybersecurity per people are just having to do all this extra work that if the organization had configuration management, should have been handled. And so they leave because it's too stressful. Configuration management is critical because it, it focuses on the baseline of the organization. And right here, what they're talking about is after you've updated it, you have to document it. And you got to tell everybody, hey, guys, we've updated the patch on the Google Chrome plugin. Or, hey, everybody, we've, we're going to remove this plugin. So be aware it's going to break some things. Anybody who's been using that plugin, we got to get rid of it because there's a vulnerability. There's a there's a anti there's a virus that attacks that plugin. There's there's a hack that gets into that plugin, uses the plugin to exploit Google browser to exploit the system that you're on. So we got to get rid of that plugin or we got to update the plugin, whatever the case may be. The configuration management process is going to announce it to everyone. And then it's going to make sure everybody has that that same fix action. Everybody's notified and everybody gets that fix action across the board so that there's a baseline. There's a baseline everybody knows about, everyone's using. Because if you don't have a baseline, you don't, you don't really have security. If, if you don't have <laughs> – think about it. If you don't know what's in your environment, it's really, really hard to fix anything you don't know about. It's impossible to fix things you don't know about. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> so configuration management focuses on that. So that's that's what configuration management does. And um, I, I know we kind of went like a way left field here, but there's a lot of, all this stuff interacts with one another. All of it, it ties in to one another. And those things are some of the big, those are two of the biggest SI2 that this one maps to that they didn't they didn't list it here, but SI2 and um, and configuration management, which is the CM controls, by the way. All right, let me see if I got any other questions here. Um, I kind of went off on a tangent on that one. Um, 
But I got some other questions I think people were asking me. If I can, I don't know if I could answer them live, but we'll see. Uh, let me see. Somebody said, I would really like to connect with you. And I just got out of the military two days ago and would like to talk to you. Okay, if this is you, I get a lot of these uh, folks that are contacting me, especially vets. If you're, if you're interested in um, knowing more about the course or if you happen to be an IT person getting out of the military or, or whatever the case, it doesn't have to be out of the military. But if you're interested in this, you can contact me at contact at convocourses.com. And what I'll do is I'll guide you in the right direction. Let's say you have no experience at all and you're trying to get into this. I can advise you on on some things that you can maybe you want to take another path that's still IT adjacent, like program management. And I'll point you to some sources that you can use there. Or maybe you happen to already be in the Department of Defense and you have to go into the contracting world and you want some advice. Well, guess what? I did that. I went from military to contracting world and now I've done the private sector for the past few years. So I know I've fully transitioned from the military to a fully commercial like private sector. So I know both those worlds. So if you are interested in if you have any questions whatsoever, it's not always about just money. It's about community. So contact me at contact at convocourses.com. I do have some courses, some of which are free. I can point you to some other sources that you can use to upgrade your career. All right. So there's that. Let me see. i um, got some kudos here. Um, somebody said that my reverse, my reverse image search doesn't work anymore man that's weird because i just used that not too long ago uh, let me see let me see if there's any other somebody talked about okay i was talking about healthcare. i did a short video where i talked about going from healthcare to it and, and essentially what i said is it's possible if you happen to be in healthcare, if you happen to be a nurse if you happen to be a, a compliance person in healthcare, if you happen to be uh, a certified nursing assistant if you happen to be uh somebody who draws blood a phlebotomist i think it's called i can't remember what it's called if you happen to do uh billing if you happen to any of these things you, and you are in the medical field you're a doctor whatever the case may be you're in the medical field and you want to transition into it what i was saying in the video is that it's very possible the reason why is because in the medical industry you actually have an advantage over me because, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that. You have an advantage over me because you know how the medical industry works. You know the terminology. You know how the structure works, how the, the ranking system between a nurse, a doctor, and the CPAs or, you know, wherever, how that, I have no idea how that stuff works, but you do. So you have an advantage of the terms that they use, the medical devices, you have uh, all of that experience, and one of the most important is you know the compliance issues that healthcare industry has to deal with, like HIPAA. It's uh, it's a big one, because I mean I HIPAA lines up perfectly with NIST 800, so I I understand it when I see it. I'm like, okay, I got it right, but you understand the structure, how to interact with clients, patients, how to deal with patient information, how the Everything works in the medical field. So you actually know that if you happen to be in the medical field, here's what I would do. If I was a nurse or a certified nurse practitioner or something like that or CPA or whatever, it's not CPA. It's, it's, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The uh, Oh, my gosh. What is it? Certified nurse uh, S a CNA. Wow. I'm getting old, man. CNA. <laughs> so if you happen to be a CNA, if I was a CNA what, and I wanted to get into IT, what I would do is – if I could, if, especially if I worked in a facility, I would find the biggest geek there, like uh, an IT guy, the IT guy that comes in and fixes the Wi-Fi. And I'd, and I'd say, look, I'm trying to get into IT. Like, Cal, what did you do to get into IT? Can I shadow you? Can you teach me some stuff? And then I would take on my time off, I would go help them if they would allow me to help them to actually do it. You can put that on your resume. If you actually help them, you can put that on your resume as IT experience. But I digress. Another thing you can do is if you happen to be in a company that's you're handling all the HR stuff for your nursing or whatever the case may be, your medical billing, 
you could ask them if you could do a lateral shift, a lateral move, meaning you go from this job, you want to stay in the company, and you want to go from this job to this job over here. You want to be an IT professional. Let's ask them. A lot of times, these companies have an inter, they want to retain, especially good people. They want to retain the people they have because it's hard to find, especially in this climate, it's hard to find good people. You happen to be one of those real hardcore people and they want to keep you. Ask them. Go to your manager and say, look, I'm trying to stay with this company, uh, even if you don't want to stay with it, right? You, you've been working there for some time. Like, use them. Say, look, I want to stay with this company. It's an IT because I might want to work in the IT department. They might say, like, yeah, but you got to do it on your time off or yeah, but, you know, whatever the case. They might even have a whole program that trains CP, uh, CNAs to go from nursing to IT. You, if I'm telling you, I've been in several companies that do that. I've been in several. In fact, I can't even think of one. Well, actually, the contracting agencies, the staffing agencies, they, they don't normally do stuff like that. But you can ask them if they have staffing for other companies that you could work for. Like, use them. Use, you're already in the company. You ask them. It's kind of crazy. In the military, I learned this. Um, I was in the military as a, I was a security person. And, um. They re at the time they really really needed cyber uh, security uh, police is what they called it when I first went in and they tr switched it to security forces. Anyway, I, I was a weapon specialist. I knew like four or five different weapons and I could take them apart, put them together. We were shooting all the time. I was a uh, expert at rifles, an expert at the M9, expert at like I could all these different weapons. I just but I don't care about guns. Like, who cares? Like, I'm not trying to impress you. I don't give a damn about guns, right? It's just not what I want to do with my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, I appreciate, I respect and appreciate weapons. I respect uh, the job of uh, an officer, but I don't want to do it. It's too hard. And I don't like it, to be honest with you. But anyway, <laughs> I had to, I wanted to cross train from being a security guard to being a, a security, a computer operator. And everybody in the field was, I mean, my my actual boss said, no, nah, you can't transfer anywhere because we really need you. I said, well, OK, I went somewhere else. I asked the people who do the staffing and the HR people on base. I went there and I said, look, I want to transition. I want to be going to computers. I'm, I'm a cop right now. Here's my AFSC, my specialization code. I want to go into computers. And then they brought out a book. And they start flipping through the book. I said, hey, they told me that I can't transfer because they really need people in the security police uh, field, security forces. They said, no, that's not true because we have other we have other jobs that require you even more. I said, really? You don't know. My, my point is you don't know unless you ask. So ask your organization. Like ask the HR department. They might have something where you can laterally change from one field to another. Like. It doesn't hurt to ask, but this person said uh, HCISSP is helpful. Let's see what HCISSP is because I have no no idea what that is. It sounds like uh, a HIPAA-related um, certification. HCISSP. I, I know that there's something like this. Let me see. Yeah, healthcare, cybersecurity. Let me see. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's an HCISP. -P. I think that's what they mean. I think they mean this right here. And this might be a good certification for you to get if you happen to be in the medical field. Here it is right here. This is So this organization right here is ISC2 squared, and they do the CISSP, one of the top certifications for security. They also do ISC CAP. They do SSC. SSCP and several other high level certifications specifically dealing with security and risk type uh, certifications. And now they have this one, HCISPP. That's what they meant. And this one right here, it is a domain in the healthcare industry, uh, information governance, information technologies in healthcare, regulatory standards. See, this right here, this is. This is the stuff that you already know if you happen to be in the healthcare industry that I don't – that I am not 
familiar with i mean i'm familiar with some of it like risk management assessment um some of the regulatory stuff but i don't know what it technology they have in healthcare that's not a computer a server and a i don't know like i have no idea i don't really know about the healthcare industry i'm not in it i've i've done assessments for them but i don't know like like i said the structure and all that kind of stuff or their their specific needs i know attack vectors they hit the medical industry so uh but there's some specialized things that they know that you know if you happen to be in the healthcare industry that i i wouldn't i just don't know i haven't done it before um but yeah it's uh this is a good one i think nice i might have to start promoting this one this is good stuff anyway let's see brandon says um I would like to know how to perform STIG implementation. So I did a video on that one not too long, uh, probably last year, about STIG implementation. I would like to revisit it because I have all the tools that I need for that um, that I could actually show you, walk you through how to how to actually use the STIG viewer. And then there's this tool called the uh, SCC Security Control Checker. I think it's called. It's a tool that actually check for the vulnerabilities and then implement them. I think it could actually install them for you on multiple systems at once, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, I can I can walk you. But if you look at, go to my main page of YouTube and just type in Stig. I've talked about it several times and there's one, at least one video where I walk people through how to, how it works. But I would... I would like to actually go through and do like a whole series on the STIG because I'm going to have to do a series on it anyway for security control assessments. So implementation would be a good one to do. I, this is something I've done a lot in the Department of Defense or working as a contractor at, in the Department of Defense. And if you didn't know, if, if this is, you don't know what we're talking about, we're, you know, a STIG is a security technical implementation guide. And you have it on, let me show you, let me see if I can show you here. You have it on all, every possible major application you can think of, and in even some switches and some routers and other networking devices and on, look at this, it's on BlackBerry. I mean, who the hell uses a BlackBerry these days? But it's on BlackBerry, it's on Cisco devices, it's on firewalls, it's on every type of device you can think of has a STIG a security technical implementation guide and here's what they look like like on this infrastructure router here um, it breaks down all the controls that you need whether it's a a low a moderate or a high system and and the differences between these is is important because it evaluates stig is a is a good new tool oh, okay i'm gonna check that one out so Category three, two, and one, this lines up with the um, impact level, security category impact levels. And security categories of a system means, like I'll give you an example. So a category one system would be a system that, that, uh, that it's not super, if, the, if that system goes down, it's not that big of a deal. It, it, the system can go down for a few days. Nobody's harmed. There's not millions of dollars weren't lost. It's fine. You know, we just got to get the system up. It is. It's an asset. However, nobody's gonna die. No, we didn't lose any money. We 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 just need to get the system back up. It's a it's a minor inconvenience uh, for it to be down. A medium, on the other hand, is an important business mission system. That's like a payment system, for example. This system is important. We got to get it up within 24 hours because, or within a day, because it's it's doing people's paychecks now. Paychecks aren't due for another week, but we need to get this thing up because we got to make make sure that uh, it's updated and backed up. It's important. Nobody's gonna die or anything. It's gonna be a pretty severe drawback because did we lose data? It's dealing with people's pay information. It's got personally identifiable information on it how what was any information leaked like there's some things that are going to be serious on that one now high impact system is different like 
This is like a weapon system. This is like a system that's costing millions of dollars, human lives, major resources, billions of dollars, millions of dollars, whatever the case may be, reputation of the nation, stuff like that. If this system goes down, it's going to hurt bad. It's, it's a catastrophic failure if, if, if it's a category. So what they do on these is say, okay, here we have the Cisco router. Um, there's 10 high-level category ones on there, meaning it's pretty easy. If, if, this, if it's easy for somebody to exploit this system, and I want to give you a specific example. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, uh, so this one right here is dealing with network element must be configured to ensure passwords are not viewable when displaying the configuration uh, information systems. Yeah, so that's dealing with passwords. That's pretty big. And then another one, another category one is a network device must be must be password protected. So imagine if you had a system that didn't have it wasn't password protected uh that's pretty serious so that's a category uh a cat one finding that's that's pretty serious now let's give you an example of a medium levels okay medium level is something like uh let's see network device must be display a DOD approved logon banner. Um, yeah, that's important. That's important for legal reasons. A DOD system has to have a banner that pops up if you log into it to say, hey, this is a DOD system. You have to abide by federal laws. It's, it's, a, it's a felony to mess with this system and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's the, for legal reasons, it's pretty important whenever somebody logs in the system. Now let's look at a low a category one low impact finding. So that would be something like this. A network device must have TCP and UDP small servers disabled. Um, so depending on the system, how important the system is, this, this low impact finding might actually be a high impact finding. And that's where somebody like you or me comes in to say, okay, well, they're putting this in as a low, but the risk is pretty high because we know that this is an externally facing, for example, router, and we know that UDP has a has recently had a vulnerability that is that could take a system out. So, a, a cybersecurity person is going to be able to figure out what's the real risk to a low, medium, or high impact finding. On, on whatever system you have because they're going to categorize that system and then determine what what the finding, what kind of finding it is. So I kind of, in the beginning of my explanation, I was, um, I conflated two different things together. So the, the and, and that's wrong. So categorization of the findings has to do with how severe, how easy it is to exploit the system based on that category of finding. So just like I explained, if you, like if you don't have passwords on a system, that's really bad. You can exploit it very easily as opposed to a banner. Like that's important, but it's, you know, it's a legal issue. But it's not going to have a hacker take out a, an entire network. And then your your category, uh, low category findings. Let me find a good one. I don't think the ports ones are good because um, those can those can go either way. Uh, let me see. Network device must have identification uh, support disabled. Identification support disabled. Okay, I don't understand that one. Um, boot P service must be disabled. Okay. Try to find one I can explain. <laughs> I haven't messed with a router in a while. <laughs> Uh, let me see. The point is, these ones you can't take out a system. Well, in theory, you can't take out a system based off of this these low impact findings. Okay, here's one. I think this is one. Um, a, the administrator must ensure the maximum host limit is at 32. 
maximum host limit is it? Do they mean the? Let me see. Uh, neighbor discovery protocol allows a hop limit. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not explaining that one. <laughs> the heck with that. Anyway, I think you get the gist of it. A low finding is like, eh, okay, we can fix that. We, we need to fix it, but it's not going to take out the network. A high is like no password. You could just, all you got to do is hit the IP, go there on a web browser, and then boom, you're inside of the, you're, you can do whatever you want in the router. So that is a category one, two, and three. Okay, let me see what else we got here. Let's see. Do I have any more questions? Let me see if there's any more questions I can answer. Let me see. Thank you guys for watching. I'm not, I'm not going to be here too much longer because this is, um, we'll keep this to about an hour. So we're almost at our hour here. Let me, I'm trying to find additional questions. If you guys came here late, Join me on TikTok. Here's my TikTok right here. We've got a thousand followers on TikTok. Um, I answer questions that are like no more than three minutes long. It's pretty fast. Just go to combo, go to TikTok and type in combo courses. And I just talk about the same th stuff I talk about here. Kind of, it's a little bit different in that sometimes I'm answering questions like in three minutes. Like on TikTok allows you to do these direct responses, which I really like. I wish YouTube would do that again. YouTube used to do that. I don't know if you guys knew that, but talk about stuff like, uh, here's a good one. NIST 800. Um, I, I released jobs job there and stuff. An incident manager. So yeah, join me on TikTok. Uh, it's a growing community. And we're going to get that thing to like 100,000 subscribers soon. TikTok's going super fast. It's not all dancing, just so you know. I, I used to think that too. I thought it was just dance. I'm like, I'm not going to go on there when it was called Musically. It used to be called Musically, and now it's uh, <laughs> and now it's TikTok. It was bought by some gigantic company um, named ByteDance. And they have a, it was made in the, in, um, by a Chinese company or purchased by a Chinese company called ByteDance, but they had to split it into two parts. One is called, uh, it's a Chinese name. But that one's in China, and the and Chinese government controls that one. And then they split it apart into TikTok, which is the rest of the Western world uses TikTok. And so that one has a different algorithm, has a different uh, control set, has a different, whole different thing going on with that one. Uh, let me see if there's any last questions I can answer. There's no quick questions, but before I go, I just want to let you guys know and remind you that uh, let me see remind you that I do have a course coming out really soon for SEA people have been asking me about it for years and I'm finally I'm finally close to having like an 80% mark that I can release this thing um, I'm gonna release it for cheap at first and then just like I did with the other ones I'm gonna expand them out and then as I expand it out, it's going to get more and more expensive. So be on the lookout for that. If you're interested in what I have right now that's out there, I've got the book that's on Audible right now. If you want a quick one hour and 30 minute listen to the actual Risk Management Framework Foundations book, I boiled it all down to an hour and 30 minutes of going straight to the point of what you need for Risk Management Framework. For NIST 853, um, eight, NIST 837, I should say. So there it is right there. And right now, if you if you go get it right now, it's a 30-day trial. You get it for free with Audible, with your Audible subscription that's free for 30 days. And then also the book is out there too. This is a part, the first part of a series that I'm doing that's going to be the RMF ISO guide which is high level quick straight to the point and then it's going to be controls which is in more detail and interpreting the control families and then assessor where it's going to talk about how do you assess each control family i don't go into each individual control because there's a thousand and seven controls and there's a bunch of security control enhancements with those controls so if you want that, the best place to go is the NIST 853 or the NIST 853A. 
that goes into assessments. This is a book that's a companion to those that will help you can, to interpret how do I do this whole, what am I as an assessor looking for to determine if this organization is managing the risk to this particular control family. That's what I'll focus on. So it'll have a breakdown of the basic um, control uh, asset assessment methods that you, ne you need to use for that particular control family. That's the type of stuff that I'm going to put in there, just like I'm doing for this control book that's coming out soon. And that's it for this one, guys. We've been talking for about an hour. Thank you for joining me. If you guys want to continue the conversation, link in the description below for the book, for the for uh, Discord for, that's growing. Uh, TikTok, ComboCourses.com. If you want to go there, just TikTok and then Combo Courses. And then I'm also on Facebook. We're expanding this community out so that we can continue this conversation even when I'm not doing these lives on Sunday or Saturday or whenever I do them. We want to continue this, and then I'll start posting those those jobs on um, on Discord real soon. So, all right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for your questions. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you so much.